Who's going to take care of all these people? What is the purpose of a human once all these machines start really getting their mojo? These are hard concepts to, to gra grapple with, but it doesn't make them not true. And, and so uh, economics is driven by scarcity and technology creates abundance. Good, good, man. Might be a real, it might be something special. First off, let's set the scene. The stock market is telling you nothing about the real economy anymore. Economic fundamentals have never mattered as little for the stock market as has been the case during this 11 year bull market. The correlation between gross domestic product growth and the direction of the S&P 500 index has only been 7% in this cycle. Historically, it has been 30% to 70%. Why? Well, That's the truth, I have to tell you. Specifically, it is the central banks, led by the Fed, who printed their way out of the recession in 08. In doing so, they have papered over the cracks, and we have seen the longest economic expansion in US history. Now, this is not exactly a meritocratic process. Money creation itself increases inequality via the Cantino effect, as money creation leads to asset price inflation, which benefits disproportionately the rich and hurts the poor. There's a whole bunch of people without $500 in sa savings. And I agree with that. There's a whole bunch of people. How will artificially printing more money solve that, their problem? Right? Because, because what, you, what you will do there is house prices will go up, stock prices will go up, rent prices will go up. They don't participate in any of those. And their dollars will be worth less and less as you drive inflation and, and they won't be able to. So, so the current path cannot work. Former Federal Reserve Chairman Paul Volcker told the New York Times in 2018, the central issue is we're developing into a plutocracy. We've got an enormous number of enormously rich people that have convinced themselves that they're rich because they're smart and constructive. The reality, of course, is that this is largely not the case. It is because the game is rigged in their favor. This was always the intention, of course. The Federal Reserve was created by bankers, for bankers. If you have assets, they're getting artificially promoted and if you don't you can't keep up to the rate uh, uh, of the, that asset price rise so you're picking the pocket of some people and giving it to uh, to others and that's why we have massive inequality in the uh, in the world that's accelerating inequality now it is important to emphasize the fact that the path we have taken in the last century has resulted in the highest living signs we have ever seen in human history However, the problem, particularly since the US completely abandoned the gold standard in 1971, is that debt is now at obscene levels. If it took $185 trillion in the last 20 years to, uh, to essentially stop deflation, it, it, to, so $185 trillion of monetary easing debt creation to get a nominal uh, inflation rate. Going forward, that number is going to explode. And, and so you have a Ponzi scheme of debt cre creation, and at some point it's going to break. Therefore, we are not operating in a free market if it requires $185 trillion of debt to create growth. In fact, the global debt to GDP ratio hit an all-time high of 322% in the third quarter of 2019. Inflation means that your dollar loses value and thus your purchasing power goes down. Deflation means that the value of your dollar goes up and your purchasing power goes up. That's a good thing, right? You get more goods and services for less. Well, no. If you have deflation, then debt explodes in real terms and you can never pay it back. Because the economy is based on debt, if you allow deflation, you have to reset the debt. And this is why central banks fear deflation so much. However, the major force driving the human race is technological progress, and this stops for no mortal. The increased abundance created by technology will result in massive job losses. Throughout history, doom porn enthusiasts have screamed that the machines are coming for jobs. This is not a new phenomenon. All technological revolutions are deflationary, since they create supply side shocks meaning they allow for more intensive use of resources and thus higher production. With more goods being produced, all other things being equal, the price of those goods will fall. In the last 20 years or so, software has disrupted and replaced many established goods and services. However, it is in the next 20 years that another disruptive technology is set to take the stage. AI, effects of oh. AI on productivity. A AI, and what's gonna do to jobs? So AI is like really unbelievably, you know, sort of fascinating. This is gonna change, well, this is gonna to touch everyone's life. You're not gonna be able to get away from this technology. If you talk to top, I'm friends with many of them, 
If you talk to top AI researchers, um, it, the, then somewhere between five and 20 years, we're gonna have general purpose AI that's better than us at everything. The following story demonstrates the incredible power of this technology. For context, Steve Schwartzman is the CEO and co-founder of the Blackstone Group, which is the most revered private equity firm in the world. I had a guy come to see me about two months ago uh, from another country, and he said, he said, uh, uh, Mr. Schwarzman, I'd like to offer my services and uh, help reduce your costs uh, at your companies. And uh, we have about 200 companies that we own. So I said, well, what, what do you have in mind? He said, well, I think we can get rid of 40% of the people in your HR uh, and your accounting department. I said, how do you do that? He said, well, it's actually very easy. Uh, we just take a camera and we look at what everybody's uh, uh, working on, their processes, and, and then, you know, we, we stick a thing into the hard drive and uh, then we know everything that they're doing and then poof, you don't need 40% of them, we can just do it. And you'll save an enormous amount of money and then we're getting going on different departments. Fucking calling me a cunt and I'll tell you, if you fire me, I'll tell you to drive you in you bald headed wanker. Right, you're fired anyway for, for that. You're in fucking trouble then. Mm, right then, see ya. And I, I listened to this, I said, well, how advanced is this technology? He said, this technology is primitive. It, it's there right now. I, you know, I could do this for you, you know, like next week. And you talk about an existential question. I said, where are you gonna do this? He said, there are about 80 countries that would work well with this. And, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be one of the richest people in the world. Hold up. And I'm sitting there going, O-M-G. What kind of challenge is this to the society as we know it? Because we talk about creative destruction. This ain't creative, this is just destruction. When you unemploy so many people so quickly and you do it globally. This virus will only accelerate the trend towards tech. COVID accelerates the trend to technology, right? And it accelerates, Zoom went from 10 million users to 200 million users in a, in, a, in a month. How many of those users don't need the same commercial real estate when they come back out of COVID? And, and, and so how much changes, how fast this changes, how fast robotics is changing, how fast AI is, is, is moving. Um, people that aren't close to technology don't realize how fast this is moving. Old legacy economic systems were not built for this tech deflation. The problem is that humans do not intuitively understand exponential growth. For example, if you take a piece of paper and you fold it 50 times, you can only fold it seven times, but say you could fold it 50 times, it would in fact reach the sun. If everyone watching this video commented, maybe it would go exponential. Try it. The question is, how does this play out? In the long term, it is the fundamental structure of the economic system that has the significant impact on people's lives, not to his president for four to eight years. Speaking of presidents, for your own sake, it's just as well you hit that like button. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. On a more serious note, we have discussed before the limited power politicians actually have, and we also know what happens when presidents don't stay in the lane. There's about 150 people that run the world. Anybody who wants to go into politics, it's, they're all fucking puppets, okay? <laughs> there are 150 and they're all men that run the world, period, full stop. They control most of the important assets, they control the money flows. The United States, as the world knows, will never start a war. We do not want a war. We do not now expect a war. This generation of Americans has already had enough, more than enough, of war and hate and oppression. After a deluded gunman assassinated President Kennedy. One could argue that the two main mechanisms of control are number one, divide and conquer, and number two, order from chaos. As we have seen many times in the past, herd psychology is worryingly easy to manipulate. Speaking of censoring information, 
In his book Anti-Fragile, Nassim Taleb discusses the anti-fragility of information. Information feeds more on attempts to harm it than it does on efforts to promote it. A fantastic example of this process is what happened in the last week with London Real. They were banned on LinkedIn and David Icke's interview was censored. Now, regardless of what you think of this particular channel or your thoughts on David Icke and the theories provided, censoring information in this way actually spreads it more virally. It's fascinating to observe how many views the videos regarding the bans and censorship have relative to the others and the impact that this has had on subscribers. It is always easier to blame a bigger enemy or to create an entirely new one rather than to admit it's a structural problem. Therefore, you avoid short-term pain, whatever the cost. The real question is if and when the situation will lead to social unrest. Printing is going to continue, but printing isn't just going to continue. It's going to accelerate to a, a, a rate that is staggering. That printing all around the world, whether it's China, Japan, everything else, will rise into asset prices and, and, um, and everything else and further, further drive inequality and society is going to break. And when that happens, um, people vote for people who say it's not your fault, it's their fault. The social science on inequality is also clear. As inequality levels increase, societies destabilize. Now, Scheidel's book basically shows the only way out of that is various forms of war, including revolution and epidemics. The sheer depth and width of jobs impacted by AI will continue to increase in the future. Now, this will not necessarily happen straight away. Artificial intelligence impacting our lives in noticeable ways in the next five years. Short. However, our transition from commodity capitalism to intellectual capitalism is inevitable, and the people and nations who fight against this trend will be on the wrong side of history. From a practical investment perspective, and disclaimer this is not investment advice, Network effects are a crucial aspect to consider moving forwards. A network effect basically means that the value of the network increases with each additional user of the network. So most of the value that's been created in monopolies are around network effects. So I look for network effects in, uh, um, in, in companies or design around network effects in, um, in companies and I've had tremendous success in my own portfolio around companies that, uh, that demonstrate that because the value to all users keeps going up and up and up and as a byproduct, their algorithms get better and as a byproduct, nobody uses a second place algorithm. An asset that could in time demonstrate very strong network effects is Bitcoin. Whether it's a currency or not, whether it's a, whether it's a hold of value, store of value that enough people trust, it could just change the game over it all. So I, I, I look for asymmetric bets, almost unlimited upside and limited downside. And if I said, where is the gold market today versus the Bitcoin market to, uh, today and what could happen, um, that it's an asymmetric bet. Overall, the current situation reminds me of the following observation regarding data from a hospital emergency team. It showed that the strongest predictor of death was the application of CPR. For more compounded, valuable content, subscribe and like.